Alright guys, um, today is going to be the first installment of a new video series. I'm going to try to film every week or so. Um, this is going to be a basic Q&A type video. So all the questions that I get through my Instagram, my Facebook, my um, YouTube, my multiple form accounts, questions that are emailed to me, PM to me, questions I see often, I'm going to try and answer in this video. Um, so the format for this is going to be Every week on Instagram, I'm going to try to make a post at the beginning of the week around Monday or so, and it will be this video, um, basically a screenshot of this video, and then in below you can comment questions that I'll answer the next video, and I'll try to get that up at the end of the week, which gives you enough time to ask your questions in, and it gives me enough time over the weekend to then film it and re-upload it for the next uh, week's installment. And I will also be including questions you guys ask me through my other social medias, so just keep asking the ones you're asking. Um, I'll probably try to do three to five questions per video. These aren't going to be long videos, but we'll kind of see how how that goes um, time-wise as we start making more of these. And yeah, I guess that's it. So this is basically going to be um, a place where you can get your question directly answered outside of PMs in a video and it's something you can always come back and reference it or for the people that follow my channel you might have some of these questions so it's good to just keep up good to know what's going on and even if you don't have a question it might you might learn something now that you will need to know a month or two from now so hopefully it'll help you guys out um, the first question from the great mush he was asking about mags feeding properly and how to fix um, magazine feeding issues and the first thing I'll address this is that there are lots of things that um, attribute to feeding issues in airsoft guns. So just to kind of show you the basic setup of what has to happen here. Um, when your mag is in the airsoft gun, so you actually have to feed um, BBs, have to go up through the mag into the hop up, and the air nozzle has to move back, allowing one BB to move up back forward to load the BB and then the air comes through from the piston assembly to fire the BB and that means that every single BB that gets loaded has to go through the mag, the receiver, past the shell, into the hop up, the air nozzle has to hold it in place, it has to go up when the air nozzle retracts and it has to go forward when the air nozzle goes uh, it returns Excuse me, and then it has to go through. So literally any one of these pieces can attribute to feeding issues. Um, especially in, in lo lower grade guns, you can find issues with your alignment of the gearbox shell or the hop-up system in the lower receiver. There can be issues where the mag well is too thin, too wide, too thick, too short, and the magazine doesn't seat properly and it can't fit. So for example, a lot of the Chinese made receivers, like D-Boys and AGM to name two that I know do this, um, the mag wells are too wide. You have to actually shim these with either Velcro or um, E-tape or something similar so the mag fits nice and snug. What happens is that the mag will go into the heat this far and it'll wobble around the entire time. This is a GMP receiver. It doesn't have that issue. It's very, very tight. But with the, um, like the D-Boys 416 that I own, the A&K receiver I used to own, mags wobble around and sometimes they would cause feeding issues with depending on the mag brand and that mag would work fine in other guns it was just because of the combination of the style of mag and the poor mag well you'd have to shim it out with some e-tape or something to get it feeding right um, the biggest way to diagnose your feeding issue because it can be so many of these parts is 99% of the time when you get a gun it's in some form in like a working condition so your goal when diagnosing a feeding issue is to think back, think what did I change in this setup that, um, like, what, what, what did you change between the time when it was working and when it wasn't working? 99% of the time, either that piece you changed or what you had to take apart and put back together to incorporate the change is causing the problem. Um, now, specifically, if you're able to narrow it down and eliminate all possibilities so you know it's a mag, um, that, that is like the main question. There are a couple things you can do with the mags. Um, they could be dirty. They could be broken on the inside. The, the BB follower could be chipped. Um, there could be gunk making um, getting in between the spring and the follower, jamming the system down. Um, mags can wear out. 
if you've had mid caps for two or three years, sometimes the springs inside just wear out. Um, you can take it apart, stretch it, bake it, clean it, put it back together, and it will revive the mag for a while. But um, sometimes you just have to replace mags. And the biggest key thing here, though, is that when mags aren't feeding, and you are 100 million percent sure that it's the mag and it's not the BBs, it's not your system, it's not your bucking protruding too far. Because um, there are a lot of things that can cause feeding issues. Just to give a few real quick, if your air nozzle is too long, it has to come all the way back this far for the BB to go up. If it's too long, it might only come back this far and it still blocks that feed tube for the BBs. Conversely, if your bucking is sits, sits too far, it's supposed to sit here to allow BBs to come up. Some fucking lips extend this far out and they actually block BBs coming up here. Um, alignment of the gearbox shell hop up, they have to mate properly. If they're too far apart, too close, to, if they're jammed together, cut at an angle, for example, if it's not straight, if it's down, that can cause feeding issues. So there are, in, like in this, for example, this being at an angle, this would be affected by your upper receiver, your outer barrel, could be your lower or your, or your um, gearbox shell itself. So there are so many things that can affect alignment and feeding issues in airsoft guns like you, you have to be able to narrow it down but if you are able to narrow it down to the mags more often than not the followers chipped the follower and something got inside and it's jamming the spring down so it can't go all the way up or it's just dirty it needs to be cleaned um, and if it's none of those things more often than not the spring inside your magazine is just worn and you just need to replace it um, Another thing too, this piece right here where the magazine actually catches the mag release in the receiver, this can wear down, and if this wears down, your magazine, will, instead of being held here, it might be held slightly lower. That, that's an exaggeration, but like I'm just showing you, if it's held too low, you can create feeding issues between this feed lip and the hop-up as well. Um, hope that helps. I mean, every situation is always different. There's a million things that I could go over and spend like a two-hour video just on feeding issues. And like every possible one, every possible fix. And even at that, there would still be some that I leave out because every situation is a little different. So the, the biggest thing, like I said, is just narrow down which piece is causing your problem and then figure out what you did that is making the piece cause the problem. Um, and then Brett Cook one asks, three wire or four wire MOSFETs? So for those of you who don't know, when you have a MOSFET, I'll just do rear wire tab, that's what I'm holding. So I had a MOSFET in my buffer tube right now. There's two ways I could wire it into this M4 receiver. Um, I could wire it using two signal wires, and four wires total, or three signal wires, which would be, sorry, one signal wire, which would be three wires total. And what this means is that if your MOSFET's sitting in the back, and you have two signal wires, two small gate wires will go through, all the way down, under the grip, not under the grip, but um, down near the grip, under the pinion gear, back up into the trigger contacts. So there's two of these. Um, one will go to the top contact, and one will go all the way through to the bottom contact. Now, if you've done that, the next two, the positive and negative wire, just go straight down from the MOSFET to the motor, both of them. Um, you can still snake it through underneath if you want, but it just goes right down on the motor anyway. If you do the three wire, which is one signal wire, you have the one signal wire going through, just like before, to the top contact. Then you have a positive thick wire going all the way through to the bottom contact, just like normal if you didn't have a MOSFET. Then you have another positive wire on that exact same bottom contact going back through down to your motor, and a negative wire from the MOSFET down to the motor. The differences here is that the three-wire method obviously has less wires total. It's a quicker setup. It's easier. There's less junk here in the buffer tube, taking up less space. The four wire setup allows you to run two signal wires down and around, which means you can actually modify this back piece here to run both your thick wires straight down into the grip. And this just frees up space under your pinion gear because you no longer have to run wires under your pinion gear where they sometimes get chewed up. Um, performance wise, there is no difference. It's literally just personal preference. They both perform the same. So if you want a quicker job, three wire. If you don't want to run wires underneath your pinion gear, do four wire and then we'll cut out mod. And I mean, that's really what it comes down to. It's, it's not like one's too much easier than the other. It's just two different ways to do it. Um, Will M187 asked, what is my favorite gun platform that is not an M4? Um, I would have to say for Airsoft, 
I love my classic army Scar L design. This is actually a D Boys Scar L, but um, it's it's the exact same gun base. Um, if you have a D Boys Echo One AGM or classic army Pro Line or Sport Line Scar L, they are all the same gun. They're just clones of one another. Um, but the D Boys actually, sorry, the Echo One actually is the D Boys. They just put an Echo One stamp on the back and replace the bucking with a Mad Bull blue bucking. Other than that, it's the exact same gun. Um, I love this gun. Um, I'm a little biased toward it. This is the first AEG I've ever owned, so I'm a little biased that way. Um, I've had it forever. It put it through its paces. I've worn it down to death and back again. Um, I've also put this gun through many different builds. Um, from a CQB dual creep to a straight up DMR, and now I'm changing it back. I'm going to be building it into a DSG soon. So I, I just love this gun. I, I love the way it looks. I love the way it feels. It's not too heavy. It's not too light. Um, it feels right in my hands, and it's extremely easy to tech on. Um, it's also internally, every single thing on the inside is the exact same as the M4, except the hop up unit. Um, the gearbox, you do have to cut off the mag catch ring, but it's the exact same gearbox that M4s use. So on top of everything I love about this gun, it's extremely easy to tech on. Um, there are literally no complaints about it whatsoever for the money I paid. It's still the favorite gun I, my, my favorite gun that I own out of all of mine. Um, it's the one I've owned the longest, and it's the one that's lasted the most through all the crap I put my, my equipment through. Um... Next question, Braden Jones 97 asked, what's the highest FPS you can get in a DSG setup? And, well, this is a DSG, so I'll use this one again. Um, there isn't necessarily a highest FPS. The way this works is that when you're shooting your gun, you have air volume. So there's a certain amount of air in your cylinder that can get compressed by the piston and used to push your BB down the barrel. So this is your whole cylinder with this much air. And now, see these ports on it? So my ports make my maximum air only goes from here to here now. And then the cylinder head actually goes into the cylinder a little bit. So maybe you only have this much. And the sorbo pads on the end of the cylinder head. So you really only have this much. So I'm using air from this section of the cylinder. All the air gathered in that is what is being used to push whatever weight BB I choose all the way down and out of my barrel. So if I need this much air to properly push the BB I choose down the barrel, but I only have this much, that's called undervoluming your setup and your FPS will um, drastically drop. The problem with DSGs is that, so I have this much air max, but the DSG only pulls the piston back halfway. So now I only have this much air maximum. So that's why it's so hard to get high FPS with DSGs because you're literally using such a, such a low amount of air volume in the cylinder. Now there are things you can change to get it back up. You can use a 9 tooth DSG, which will go back to here. You can use less or no sorbo, which will move this back to here. But it's still, it's still significantly less than if you had the entire cylinder worth of air to use. And that's also why DSGs need really, really short barrels because you just don't have the air to push a BB down a longer barrel. Um, without getting too much into voluming, there are plenty of guides online. If you, I'll probably make an, a video totally about voluming soon. But the gist of this you need to know is that you need so much air in the cylinder to push a BB down the barrel. And the heavier the BB, the more air you need. The longer the barrel, the more air you need. So with DSGs, that's why you tend to use light BBs, short barrels, because you only have this much air. You're only pulling the piston back halfway, not all the way. So, I mean, to answer the question, I've seen FPSs of above 400. Uh, I don't think I've seen anything at 500 yet. I personally am actually going to build that SCAR into a field-oriented DSG. My FPS goal is between 390 and 440. Um, ideally, I'd like to have it at 440, but I don't know if I'll be able to reach that with my setup. Um, how like I, It can be done. It's just hard because your biggest... Um, obstacle is just not having enough air to push these BBs down these barrels at that high FPS. Um, so I mean that that's the best way to answer without again making like an hour long video just on that topic. And the last question is New England Airsofter asked me cry or die. I'd probably die. Um, not because I don't like cry or, or gear but obviously you guys who follow my channel know I'm an Airsoft tech. 
I love the guns. I love building. I love inside. If I have this much money, I've already spent that much of it on guns or internals. So I just, when I go to buy gear, I just don't have the money to buy the top tier um, quality gear. Now, I don't cheap out. I don't buy really crappy gear either. Um, however, for me, I just, what I'll do is I'll buy nicer repro gear or decent gear. And I'll just buy a tiny bit of it at a time when I have the money to spend on it. Um, I will go into gear in a different video though because that's a whole different topic. And just some quick updates for you guys for future videos coming out soon. Um, I just received from my friend Jacob actually an AWS Raptor MOSFET which will be going into my SCAR DSG build. So I will have more on that. I need to order the parts for that SCAR DSG build still as well. So I'll be doing that soon. And actually, Retro Arms is sending me one of their version 2 split gearbox shells to review and test for them because they need to redo a lot of the dimensions on the inside. So they contacted me to specifically test their shells for them, test them for functionality, reliability, and compatibility with popular parts on the market. Basically make sure they work, they do what they're supposed to, and they fit parts because I know they don't as of right now. So that's what they're trying to fix. That's what I'm going to hopefully help them out with. Um, 8 millimeter low neck steel bushings and an SHS CNC pinion gear. These are both for my DSG build. And I bought new digital calipers as well. This is old battery. Um, again, these are all just for the retro arm shell testing, so I will have more videos on that soon. Um, thanks for tuning in, guys. This is the first week of my Q&A videos. Hopefully, we can keep this going. All right, see you later.